Hello and welcome to another SHM review and in this particular review we are discussing, as you'll have seen from the title, a 2008 movie by the name of Splinter. And straight off the bat I have to say that Splinter is one of my personal favourite movies, especially within the survival horror genre. It only stars six people and it's set predominantly in just one location. And as I've mentioned before on this channel, I love films like that. Films that make the most out of not very much. Now the film had quite an obviously limited budget and financially it's one of the worst failures of any good horror movie. It made only $480,000 at the box office, which is insane compared to how good this film actually is. It's actually one of the best modern horror films you can watch, and a severely underappreciated one. This is a film that you just don't hear people talking about, but people who do like the film really like it. And although it was a failure commercially, critically it's actually pretty highly rated. It tends to get ratings of around the 70 or 7 out of 10 mark from most rating services, which is a pretty decent score for a film that did to all intents and purposes, fail. So, what is the film about? Well, the film revolves around, as we said, six characters, but there are four main characters, and those characters are played by two couples. Now, the couple that you stick with from the outset of the film are played by Paolo Costanzo and Jill Wagner, who is, interestingly, as a slight side note, a high school friend of YouTube stars Rhett and Link, which is a little bit of interesting trivia. But you follow this couple as they're going to go camping. That doesn't work out, so they decide to travel on. They then come across another couple, played by Shay Wingham and Rachel Kerbs, and for various reasons they end up getting stuck at a gas station. At this gas station though, there is a creature. The Splinter Creature. This is a creature which is reminiscent in the way it works of iconic monsters such as The Thing. It's not the same, but it's similar. And it's one of the best movie monsters of recent years. It looks fantastic, it sounds incredible, and it is a ferocious creature to come up against. In fact, as far as movie monsters go, Splinter is actually one of the most formidable, and were it a real creature, it would technically be almost unbeatable. Now in the movie, without spoiling anything, it is quite obviously a case of survival. They have to survive this creature using only what they have at hand in the gas station. And the film, as I said, does a lot with that simple premise. I can understand why some people may not like the film. The budget is obviously low, setting the film in one location is not really something that's done that often these days, especially with horror films, and I can understand why people would get bored of the same scenery. Personally though, I don't find that boring at all. I love it. So let's break down the film. First of all, our story and plot. For the story and plot of the film, as I already mentioned, it is relatively simple. It's not necessarily that unique either. It's about a group of people stuck in one location for various reasons who have to survive a creature, similar to, as I said before, movies like The Thing, and to some degree Jaws as well, where at the end of the film they are essentially stuck in one location, on the boat. But for the overall story and plot of Splinter, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10, because it's certainly not the most imaginative of plots, but at the same time it doesn't need to be, and it definitely raises the bar from the baseline of five. As far as the characters and their motivations, well you've only got six characters to work with, only four main characters, and one creature. The creature is brilliant, the creature is a 10 out of 10 in my book, but as far as the human characters, I'm going to give them a six. Now that is lower than some of my other reviews, and that may sound disappointing. But the fact is, although the characters are certainly easy to root for and interesting, some of the motivations do change on a dime, and there are some annoying scenes with one or two of the characters, and that kind of lets it down, because it's not really needed. It's not awful, 
it's no way near the worst acting I've seen in a horror film. It's actually far better than most. But it's still not quite up to the level of something like The Thing, Jaws, or something like that. As far as the visuals and effects, well, it may only be set in one location, but the gore, the fear factor, and the overall appearance of the film has a gritty, grimy, slimy, spiky look that I absolutely love. So for the visuals and certainly the creature effects, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. It's not necessarily up there with the best of them, like Alien, Predator, The Thing, etc. But it's very good, especially for its budget and for a newer horror film where many people do seem to skimp, ironically enough, on the quality of the monster. The one thing that you need to make a monster movie work is for the monster to look good, and a lot of people don't really put enough effort into that. This film certainly does. The monster is fantastic. As far as the audio and music, it's better than some. The music, and especially the soundtrack of the creature itself, is very effective. It sounds great. It's one of the most unique sounds from a, mo a movie monster or creature, and for that I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Finally, for the rewatchability and entertainment factor, which, as I've mentioned before on the channel, is by far the most subjective to me personally, this is the category where it's basically just down completely to my personal opinion, I'm going to have to give it a 10. Now that sounds completely biased and probably ridiculous to some people who have seen the film and maybe aren't a fan of it, but I love the film. I love how it does a lot with a low budget. It's possibly the best low budget film I've seen in a long time, Certainly one of the best low-budget films of recent years, at least, has one of the most imaginative and unstoppable and creepiest movie monsters, and it's the kind of film where, as cliched as it sounds, you can just sit down with a drink, with a group of friends, or on your own, and just have fun with it. It's a fun film. It's not the kind of film where, if you talk, you're going to miss something important, because there's not all that much dialogue, and the dialogue which is said tends to be just general conversation rather than revolutionary points. But overall, it's a highly entertaining monster film, as I said overall, one of the most entertaining of recent years in fact, and yeah, it's basically a 10 out of 10 in my book. Overall then, the tabulated score for the 2008 film by the name of Splinter is going to be a very respectable 3.7 out of 5, which is a pretty good score, especially considering that, as we said, it was highly, unfortunately, a financial failure. My overall verdict for this film is if you have not seen Splinter, definitely try and change that. If you can find a copy of it on Blu-ray or DVD, or even if you could watch it at a friend's house, I would highly recommend trying to check this film out. If you're a fan of horror films, if you're a fan of survival films, if you're a fan of monsters especially, you will enjoy it very much. But for now, that's it for this review. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.